This tutorial will teach you the full scope of the color grading strength of Vegas Pro 18, including white balance, color grading, LUT usage, and hue shifting. This is my footage of some cell phone stuff I shot. I need you to see my color card. This is a cheap color card. I'm gonna have some links to some in the description, this cheap one, and then there's also some much more expensive ones. In the previous one I did, I had a really destroyed white balance to show you how to restore really bad shots and the power of the color grading panel. This one, we're going to go with a standard. This one's almost fine. It's not perfect though. We're going to make it perfect, and we're gonna talk about how to do that. A limitation of my camera is that it is not a full raw grab of the footage. It doesn't take log files and color values to play with. So that's something that's going to come and play as we do this. That's what a lot of people are dealing with. But if you have a nicer camera that's got log, then we'll talk about what to do with that. First you can hit Alt and G. If you've got log color values, you might not want to start from scratch. You might want to actually do your camera LUT. And that means you can add a camera LUT right from the beginning that's in this input LUT tab right here. Once you hit Alt-G, you can also access the color grading panel by hitting this button right here too. Here is where you can browse and you can grab a LUT and you can add it. For us, we're not going to do this right now. I'm going to reset it. So you need to hold the color card somewhere where it's got the same lighting as the subjects that you care about, not um, too close, too far away from the camera. This is a place where even though it's slightly out of focus, it is something that I know it's getting the same light that the phone is. Wave it around and find a point where it's not blurring. So here we go. We're going to click on the event pan crop and we're going to click on mask. We're going to check that box right there and we're going to click on anchor creation tool. And we're just going to come right up here on your event pan crop title and we're going to go boop, boop, boop boop and boop there we go so now we can zoom in and we can see that this white doesn't look so perfect anymore does it you can see the color gradients on your card this is your grayscale this is how we get a good white balance and I want to tell you this is eighth grade science right here white is all the colors black is none of the colors and white this is less and less and less of the colors so in our vector scope you can see right here in the center as long as it's in the center it's going to look white but the closer it is to the center the actual more white it is and ours actually leans towards red and magenta so what we can do is we can go to I'm going to go to the vector scope waveform and histogram and we're going to look at all these things these are the stair steps of gray look at that don't mind these little lines here that's the little black lines in between um, this is uh, the vector scope again and this is the histogram this is what a standard histogram looks like, uh, the collection of light we have there. And this is what um, the histogram that we're going to use, the luminous RGB histogram, the red, green, blue. It lets us see how much red, how much green, how much blue is distributed over an area. And first off, we can go to input and output, and we can actually increase the max output. And you can see that it's brightening everything up everything's looking a little better it's also exaggerating our issues if this little box right here that's white if that box touches the 100 it's like a perfect white right there uh, and the slimmer these little boxes look in the waveform composite the tighter the color correction is going to be we're not going to worry about getting it all the way to 100 we're going to just kind of bump this up to about yay because in broadcast, uh, these colors get clipped off and cut off a lot of times in the signal. So it's kind of safer to not bleed out and overexpose your whites. Uh, if you go off the histogram, you're overexposing, and you can overexpose to the point where everything is whited out. You can also mess with this with exposure a little bit too. We're going to go to the input max, and we're going to rise this up to about here. And then input min is where you crush the darks, crush the blacks, uh, and you get this black, a more true black. Now, perfect black, uh, to get to a perfect black, you're going to actually start losing your gray information, and you're going to start losing a lot of information, and your video is going to look really bad. So you just kind of gently tug this to uh, about 0 0.4 is what I know my camera likes, but this, this um, 
you're not going to get a perfect black, but you're going to get this a looking a lot more like a standard solid black color, more like what you're actually seeing in real life on your card. Now we can graduate to the color wheels. Now color channels are the same thing. Uh, for those of you who like sliders, you have a special place in our hearts but we are going to the color wheels because what I love about color wheels is you can see what you're doing because if you go towards blue you're going away from red and green if you go towards red you're going away from blue and green and that's the, that's what actually happens so with the color wheels you can actually see what you're leaving and what you're gaining uh, and speaking of gain, gain is your highs, that's this section of the histogram gain is your highs, gamma is your mids and lift is your lows. And so what we're going to do is line all these values up. So first off, gain is the worst. So we're going to start with gain. Now you're wondering what's offset? Offsets if you have a color cast. If you notice there's like like a color that kind of just really really overtakes something like man it's just really green or it's just really blue or it's just really whatever. You can start with offset and get rid of that color cast. Uh, just move away from the color that is casting over your whole footage. Uh, we don't have a color cast problem right now so we're not going to be touching offset. So gain is this top section and we're going to hit the control key because control is how you move subtly. If you don't hold the control key you move wildly and it's a dance party and you don't want the dance party. You just want to move slowly. So we're going to hold control and we're going to move away from red towards green a little bit and towards blue but most a little bit more towards green than blue look at that there we go things are lining up great maybe just a hair more away from the green I overdid it there we go there we go there we go perfect so now these all look really good and if we look at our line the blues and greens are almost lined up but the reds still a little hot so we can go over here to the gamma and we can do the same thing we can just drop the reds a little bit and then boom look at that everything's just about lined up let's drop the reds a little bit more okay there we go now everything's just about perfectly lined up how pedantic you want to be about this is up to you you now have a white balanced image that's cool good stuff so let's go to the event pan crop button and uncheck the mask here and now let's look at our footage it's looking pretty good it's looking pretty good the bendy straws on the back of my phone are looking great. So uh, I have more footage like this. I can grab it right here and let's look at the differences. When you look at the fo this footage over here versus this footage over here, uh, it's a little different, right? The colors are a little different because this isn't as perfectly white balanced as this is. Now uh, we're to the point where we're ready to take our white balance and we're going to move it to this clip over here. So I'm going to right click and hit copy. There's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to show you. And then we're going to right click and hit paste event attributes and then boom we move the color grade and the mask over. You can actually selectively paste event attributes if you want to but if we take off the mask you can see that the color grade is now on the new clip as well and you can see what it looks like on and off so that's cool let's delete it because I'm gonna go over here uh, and I'm gonna remove the mask on this clip as well just uncheck it right there and um, you can see how it looks but I wanna go to export LUT because I like that white balance what if I so if I want to turn this white balance into a LUT then I can say export LUT and then I can just call it white balance for phone and then save and then let's go over here now that we're selected on this we're in this color grading panel uh, it's added color grading back but it's not added the same color grading back uh, because uh, we have the color grading panel open and we selected it we're gonna go to input LUT and we're gonna go to browse and we're gonna go to white balance for phone and boom that is now the same look that we had over here. So that is a way that you can make your life a lot easier is exporting LUTs that you've created. So that is what's called like an input LUT or white balance LUT where uh, a look LUT would be something different but you can import a second LUT over here with the look LUT. We're going to talk more about that in a second. So let's talk about the elephant in the room the colors. Uh, 
they're not perfect actually and I'll show you I'll, I'll prove it to you so let's go ahead and turn this mask back on I'm gonna grab the mask and just move it and then I'm gonna double click it with the arrow select over here and I'm just gonna move the corners to where I need it to go now this is colors so let's zoom in on the vector scope for a second when we look at the vector scope you can see there's some issues because first off some of these colors bleed outside of the chart so let's go and let's fix these colors one by one so first off let's go to our video effects and we'll grab the color corrector secondary it's very important that you select a secondary grab it on here drop it on and then with the color corrector secondary you can actually go select effect range and then you can grab the red and then you now you're just affecting the red however it's actually done a little too good of a job of grabbing it so we're gonna go ahead and remove the luminance and remove the saturation if you've missed this step you'll see exactly why you should do that so um, then we can see how you can rotate the hue you can move the reds all the way around and turn the red into something bizarre uh, but we're not gonna do that we like where red is what we need to do is really just bump down the saturation of red just say red chill out a little bit and so red looks a lot better now so uh, let's do it again let's grab this and let's go to magenta select the effect range grab magenta here on the other side go to limits luminance remove that go to the limit saturation remove that and then rotate the hue again and we're gonna have to go around the world for magenta but we can do it and then boom Magenta's looking a lot more magenta, uh, but we're gonna bump the saturation down from magenta too because it's just too crazy. We're gonna the second line is kind of what I'm aiming for. Uh, not exactly. Uh, I don't want to mess with things too much, right? Like it's not something that you just want to go. Oh well, I'll just tuck this here and tuck this here because the more you mess with things, the more that's having to stretch your color palette uh, that your camera has, and so you want it to stretch not a lot. You don't want it to stretch less so uh, especially if you don't have log files that you're working from so I'm going to drop this down to yay here and boom that looks so much better and we can do these for all the colors so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so you don't have to you don't have to we'll, we'll just we'll just blow through this section you do want to aim for the boxes though like aim for inside the boxes here All right, so we're to the final one. That's the blues, and the blue has the biggest problem because the blue doesn't really exist. It's so small. I don't know what happened to it, but we're going to help it out. So select the effect range, grab the blue, and then we're going to drop, uncheck the luminance, uncheck the saturation to make sure we grab the entire color, and we don't have to worry about rotating it, right? We just need to worry about adding saturation to it. We're just going to barely hit the box here, uh, and the reason why is because we're running out of color information because we've been stretching everything out so much and so you can see some little dots right there in the blue so uh, we're just gonna touch the top of that box get the blue back to where it needs to be and we're gonna smooth this out so when it goes to the limit hue uh, we need to give it a little more room to work with but if we uncheck that we're gonna ruin everything so leave this checked and then um, go to your width and you can broaden the width just a little bit and that'll help pull some of that missing color and smooth it out some. You don't want to smooth it out a lot because you're actually going to screw with the other colors a little bit. This is not going to be your pro your problem in particular, but you may have a problem like this. If you start seeing the little dots, little black dots, that means that you're running out of color space. So I'm going to smooth it out some, try and leave cyan, not over because it's gonna, like it's affecting its neighbors, right? So I'm going to make sure that cyan is not overly affected. There we go that fixes everything, except I'm going to go back to cyan and remove the saturation. So that fixes our color wheels, and now we have a truly color corrected image. And let's take a look at how it looks without everything. All right, double click on your mask, move it over to skin tones. 
Now you should see that your skin tone lines should hit right about here. You don't have to use these skin tone boxes. What you can actually do is actually just grab the skin of your talent. So what you can do is you can actually go to offset and you can just barely gently tug it in the direction you want it to go and then you can have skin tone that you want. And then we're going to uncheck the mask again and then boom everything looks really good. Now at this point if you really want all this stuff to travel to another clip the easiest way to do it is to just uncheck the color grading make sure it's a blank palette it's right so right now it's gotten it's got this color grading on it we want we want to remove it and then uh, go over here and we want to right click copy right click and then hit paste event attributes and now if we click over here you can see that this also has the same color palette so the rainbow is not as pretty right but because my colors were so off and I did so much correction to them that is something you risk when your color space is low like it is on my camera you can see there's less bleed in between the colors because I've flattened it all out so that's something you want to keep in mind as you're color grading the card is a great place to start but the card is really more like guidelines so um, that's where we get into color gradings you can go and you can pick out the color palette you want you can make your red look more velvety you can make your blue look more blue you can make your greens really pop or you can make your greens really muted you can do a lot of things with that and then that is a, a color grade that you can bring to other clips so I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick so uh, you've already got the white balance right and then you've got your secondary color corrections on it so leave your secondary color corrections on it leave it all there but what you're gonna want to do is actually export the LUT uh, remember and we're gonna I'm just gonna call this done LUT because I was showing you earlier but now I know we're done uh, it's just gonna export what you've done here on the color grading panel so you need to leave your secondary color correctors on the clip and import those over where you need to import those is you can actually go to your input LUT you can go back to your color your color wheels and reset everything now your white balance has been reset but your color has been corrected that's an interesting situation to be in so go ahead and go to LUTs and go to browse and then go to um, I called it the done LUT and boom the LUTs back on it I want to turn the mask back on and look at my colors this, let's just do something simple Let's bulk up the blues a little bit. Let's move away from the blues and the midtones. Actually, see, I'm kind of getting a color palette that I like here. Try not to destroy blue in the process. And then let's bump up the low blues too. All right, so now I've got a look that is different. Uh, and what I can do is I can export this LUT and this is it's not it's not a pretty LUT it's really just a I, I wanted this to exist see it's all nasty looking that's not a good LUT I'm not a good color grader that's that's there's uh, a Dato Leaf is a good color grader uh, this is just how to do it so let's take this nasty this nasty look and we'll just go to export LUT again and we're gonna call this phone look LUT we're gonna hit save so now, boom, let's go over here to this phone. Let us remove the color grading off of it again because uh, I'm going to show you the whole process. So I want to still keep all the secondary color correctors on it. I want that pr to still move over. Uh, but what now I can do is go to the input LUT, browse, done LUT, open. That's our camera LUT, our input LUT. Now I can go to the look LUT and go to browse and then we'll go to phone look LUT boom and now that nasty color is in both places this is a bad color grade but that is how to do some crazy color grading ness to everything I'm not the world's best color grader 
but I hope that you now better understand these tools in Vegas. To those of you who are color grading purists, if you have any notes or comments or better things, better ways to do it, please let me know in the comments. If you've got a good enough suggestion, I'm going to pin it at the top because I just want to make sure everybody's got the best foot forward in this process. Good luck color grading. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. If you decide to buy Vegas through my affiliates link, that helps out this channel a ton. If you buy the color cards through the affiliates link, it also helps out the channel a ton. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything to talk about. I'll see you next time.